Akua Leslie Hope is a creator and wisdom seeker who uses sound, words, fiber, glass, metal, and wire to create poems, patterns, stories, music, sculpture, adornments, and peace. A third-generation New Yorker, her honors include the Elgin, NEA, two NYFAs, a SF SFPA award, and Riesling and Pushcart Prize nominations. Akua, take it away. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I want to say that I'm speaking to you from the ancestral lands of the Anandawaga, also known as the Seneca, keepers of the Western Door in the area currently called the Southern Finger Lakes region of New York State. Thank you for having me. I'm going to begin with dragon. I fell in love with dragons as a teenager. By the way, I'm reading poems and there'll be three. Okay. So I fell in love with dragons as a teenager when I read Dragon Riders of Pern when it first came out. I'm a very old person. And this poem appears in Other Wears, which just won the SFPA's Elgin Award. And I'm very happy about that. Dragon. Those portraits of us as winged alligators are unseemly. I don't chomp raw meat. I'm flexible, articulate, prescient. My iridescent armor is fish scale soft. Should you touch me, I will shimmer my plates. My eyes are large and slanted. My nose equine and feline with Fleared, delicate nostrils, Roman arches that relish blooms of peonies as well as milkweed, savor the intoxication of apple blossom and fruiting spires of catalpa. My fire, not unlike your own, who can breathe hot or blow cold, which we do to tease, lace, filigrees from ice, moisture sculptures to adorn winter before we fly south. Unless heartbound by love for some cause we think just or enamored by a soft flesh child we cannot touch, only covet or guard. When your oldest friends are trees and you carry seeds of a coupling made before the river turned east, you cherish any connection. After you've buried your boulder eggs apart, having inscribed each with runes of hope and instruction, yes, we're born large and literate, they're left in quiescent peril to awaken when and where the earth heaves again and bleeds her molten recreation. Dragon. My next poem was, began with the notion that whales, certain whales live for hundreds of years and They'd found whales with marks of our primitive weapons on them, with harpoon marks, with scars. This is called Mysticeti, which is the baleen whales, the whales without teeth. And it was um, inspired by the call for ghost poems. So it's also a ghost poem. Mysticeti. When Inuits pray to the whale, their prayer boat captain lifts his arms, sings aloud that all be kept from harm, that this vessel of life will surrender, relinquish its one self for their many, and that all whale is and carries transforms to fuel their community. Below the blue subliteral zone, after brine stung their eyes, burnt their skin, filled their noses and mouths, try as they might to float, spread starved limbs on indifferent waves, dreamt 
of reaching far home shores of palm wine, mask dance, foo-foo. Some embraced the inevitable. Others fought with the same outcome. These incarcerated, these enslaved, these forsaken, keel-hauled, shackled, and bound to an alien ledger for insurance, jettisoned into the sea. The whale met the many and recognized their purity of anguish, their longing to rise up and know land again, to see sky and light above the waves that buried them, to breathe free. They reached out to her, exchanged knowledge of a shared cruelty by the same slayers who used without gratitude, killed without hunger, who stole and discarded life for profit. Whale was a hundred when she swam by these waiting souls who attached to her like the barnacles she wore, swirling around her until each found the right spot, cemented their remnant of being to her vastness, armored her, informed her, some entered whale song. Some became sirens after a century of ocean crossing. Others protected her, warning her away from murderous ships, harpoons, and ports that rendered her kin lamp oil and beauty cream for abandoned wives. The breath of death preserved her life. My last poem is as Yemaya. Yemaya um, is a Yoruba Orisha who came to the New World, patron saint in the New World of oceans and rivers, and she's depicted as a queenly mermaid. I have a number of mermaid poems. Uh, there is another one, I think. Yes, there is in other words. In other words, there's another. Um, I. I resonate with mermaids as Yemaya. When I was paralyzed, my two legs felt as one sparking something that began below my waist. Disconnected from my will, they floated on their own in a sea of perception, embraced everywhere, sensate and sinuous. I swam up from brokenness into dream, darting in three dimensions as unafraid of up as down, as skillful with left as right. My great lungs fill with air, my long arms strengthen with each sure stroke as I plunge toward my sister, pink and black, leather black, who does not blink as we match motions and dance. And all around me, light from water crossing foremothers who did not fly, but swam and sang across hidden valleys and buried mountains as humpbacks do all around the globe at once in a chorus of continuance, history sharing like right whales who survived their Holocaust, carry memory for hundreds of years, outlive generations of miscreants and murderers, unforgotten wounds now mere tattoos and testament to what endures. And they told me, though land forsakes, consigns me to the chair, wheels me in the corner, Beyond the edge, water boys and welcomes her wide board crinoline flippers gleam in dusk, sparkle at dawn, flare at midday, beckon remembrance as she sirens return as Yemaya. Thank you for listening.